Hello health champions, today I want to talk about vitamin C because there's so many misconceptions about vitamin C and vitamins in general and I know that when you go out and spend your money on supplements at least you want them not to harm you. So I want to go over the five most common big misconceptions about vitamin C coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Vitamin C is often known as ascorbic acid. And that comes from the word scorbutus, which means scurvy, which is a terrible disease where your gums bleed and your teeth fall out and your skin turns black and you basically die. Ascorbic means not scurvy and something against scurvy. So that's how it's got its name, ascorbic acid. And scurvy was a disease that claimed about 2 million lives between the years 1500 and 1800 when people started traveling the world on boats, on sailing ships, and they would spend months or even years on board these. And if they didn't get proper food, then they would get scurvy. This was really brought home in 1740 when Great Britain sent out a ship to the Pacific and they had 2,000 sailors when they left and less than 700 of those sailors returned home. So it was like a death sentence just to get on a ship. And in 1753, a physician called James Lynn figured out that the reason was these people did not get a great variety in their diet. They had a very limited food supply. So they started looking for foods that would reverse this scurvy. They had no idea what vitamin C was or any vitamin for that matter. That was still about 200 years into the future to be discovered. And they found at first that one of the best anti-scorbutic foods was citrus. And that was very effective that in a few weeks or a couple months they could completely reverse scurvy with some citrus. But the problem was that they couldn't bring fruit on board because it only kept for a week or so. And one of the solutions was sauerkraut because when you ferment cabbage it preserves the cabbage and it keeps for months or even years. So let's dive into misconception number one and that is that vitamin C deficiencies are rare. And the reason they think that is because scurvy is rare and that is true. Full-blown scurvy is extremely rare. It's unheard of and it's very easy to fix. So we don't have that anymore. However, connective tissue problems are not rare. And this is an example of a connective tissue problem because vitamin C is involved in making protein and putting fibers together. So connective tissue is anything that holds the body together, things like bone or skin or gums for your teeth or blood vessels to contain your blood. So when blood vessels get brittle, then you can get things like this. And vitamin C is at the root of all of those. Misconception number two is that the best, or some people think the only source of vitamin C is oranges and the orange juice industry has certainly made a point of that but a matter of fact kale or bell peppers the red and the yellow and the green have much more vitamin c than the orange juice and without all that sugar broccoli and brussels sprouts also have a lot more vitamin c than orange juice and cauliflower is pretty close it's on par basically with with orange and then oranges are still a great source. It's just not the best, especially in my opinion, because it has a lot of sugar. But another problem with the orange is that they make juice and they pasteurize it. So everything you buy in the store is going to be pasteurized. And the pasteurization, of course, kills off all that good, normal, natural vitamin C. So then they fortify it. Okay, they, they squeeze the juice, they kill the vitamin C, and then they add back synthetic vitamin C. So now they can tell you on the label that it has so many milligrams of ascorbic acid again. But it's not the same thing. 
Misconception number three is that vitamin C and ascorbic acid is the same thing. And here's one of the big problems because the official definition, if you look it up in a dictionary, if you look it up on Google, if you look any medical definition, they're going to tell you that this is how it is. Vitamin C is ascorbic acid and yet in nature that's just not how it works. Nature never makes isolated ascorbic acid. In nature it puts together the vitamin C complex. And think of that as a functional complex. Think of it as a machine with pieces that work together. So if you look, if you open up an old watch and you look at all these different pieces and you look at all the cogwheels, you would never go and say that, oh, I think that is the piece that tells the time because it's together. We all understand that one, if you take one piece out, then the rest of the pieces don't work. They all work together. This, however, is an isolated unit. It's an isolated component which ascorbic acid is. It's an isolated, it's a synthetic, crystalline, purified, synthetic compound that does not perform a function like a complex machine does. And furthermore, it is made from glucose, which is typically derived from corn syrup. It's a mass-produced, industrialized product. It's not a nutrient. It's an antioxidant. So let's just dive a little more into what the vitamin C complex really is so you understand the difference. So it has ascorbogen bioflavonoid complexes. They play multiple roles in the overall function of the complex to coordinate function. There's an enzyme called tyrosinase which activates trace minerals and therefore activates your white blood cells and your immune system. So the immune benefits are not from the ascorbic acid, it's from the tyrosinase primarily. You have P factors which provide vessel strength. They start up this collagen formation. We have K factors which help the blood clotting. We have J factors which improve oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. So these are all the central components of the vitamin C complex. Then where does ascorbic acid come in? Well, ascorbic acid is the package. It's the protective coating, if you will. So think of it, it is an antioxidant. That is true, it is an antioxidant, and that's not a bad thing in small amounts, which acts as a preservative or a wrapper. But the antioxidant is not there for us. It's there to protect the complex. Misconception number four is that more is always better. And this is, we get this mindset from the medical model that we take drugs, we take medication that's supposed to do something. And a small dose does a little bit and a bigger dose does more until we have a toxic dose. Well, that's not how it works with nutrients. If you're missing a nutrient, then you get better off if you take it. But once you have enough, more isn't better because it's not supposed to do anything. It's just supposed to be there enough for the body to use. Once the body has enough to use, more isn't going to improve anything. It's not going to drive anything. It's just going to start interfering. If we take mega doses of ascorbic acid, because we typically are never going to get mega doses of real vitamin C, then it really acts as a short-term safe drug. It is like a drug. It, it's potent, very large doses, has the power to go in and sort of interfere with body function and shut things down. And that could be beneficial in a crisis, in a strong infection, in an acute infection. Think of it as a short-term safe drug and if you use it and use it accordingly. If you use mega doses long term, then they will create imbalance because nature put things together in complexes. All of these components are perfectly balanced. If your body needs all of them together, then you get them together. But if you take mega doses 
of the wrapper of the antioxidant, now that component is going to be out of proportion with all the other components and over time you will develop imbalances. Misconception number five is that vitamin C is good for you because it's an antioxidant and that is not how it works. What is an antioxidant? What is oxygen? What is oxidation? Well, if you have fatigue, it's because you don't have enough energy. That energy comes from oxygen. The way your body makes energy is through oxygen. We oxidize food stuff to make energy. If you hold your breath for a minute or two, then you'll realize how important that oxygen is. That's why we breathe, to get oxygen. And antioxidants interfere with that function. Now don't worry, it doesn't make berries bad. It doesn't make food, fruits and vegetables with antioxidants bad. But they're not good for you because they have antioxidants they're good for you despite that. It's all the other stuff in the food that's actually good. So all your energy comes from oxygen and excess synthetic mega doses of antioxidants will interfere with that energy production. Another thing that antioxidants do is they combat free radicals and that's sort of assuming that free radicals are always bad but there's a balance of things in the body there's always a balance of antioxidant activity and of free radical activity and the main antioxidant that we need as humans is manufactured inside the body it's called glutathione so whole fresh food is great for you but it's not good for you because it has antioxidants it's good for you despite the antioxidants in there. And the reason they're still good for us is that they don't have a lot of antioxidants. They don't come close to the amounts that we get when we start adding synthetic antioxidants. So before you get too upset about having your worldview of antioxidants shattered, let's look at some evidence. The JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, did a huge meta-study published in February 2007. They looked at 68 different randomized trials, 385 different publications involving over 230,000 people. So this was basically including every paper ever studied, ever published on antioxidants. And here was their conclusion. They did not find any convincing evidence that antioxidant supplements have beneficial effects on mortality. They however found that beta carotene, vitamin A and vitamin E increase the risk of death by 5%. Not only did it not do any good, but it actually kills you. And I believe a lot of that has to do with the fact that it excess interferes with oxygenation and oxygen is one of the most precious substances to your body but it also interferes with some of the cleanup we'll talk a little more about that when it came to vitamin C they said that further trials were needed to establish the effects of vitamin C and selenium so basically even though they had over 200,000 people most of these people were on a multivitamin they were on a combination of different supplements and they didn't have enough people who were only on vitamin C to draw any conclusions. So they couldn't say for sure if it was of benefit or detriment. And then they went on to say that the 5% increased death rate was probably very conservative. And why is that? Because most research doesn't get published. They say a large number of unpublished trials may exist and they're more likely to be neutral or negative because if people do a research study, it's just human nature. We're excited about what we're going to find and if we don't find it, then we're more likely to just put the papers away than to send them in and fight to get them published. 
So it has been known that 90% of neutral or unfavorable results don't get published. So the studies that they found were probably just the 10% the that got published anyway. In the discussion on the paper, they try to come up with some reasoning, some rationale for how is it possible that people spend billions of dollars on something that's supposedly good and then it turns out it kills them. So one thing they said was that although oxidative stress has a hypothesized role, hypothesized meaning it's, it's a theory, it's an idea, they think that free radicals cause these diseases, but it's never been proven. It's never been a single case where they've shown that that is the causative mechanism. And then they said that by eliminating free radicals, which antioxidants do, antioxidants fight off free radicals, when we reduce free radicals, we also interfere with some essential defensive mechanism in the body such as apoptosis, phagocytosis, and detoxification. And these things are also known as autophagy. And autophagy is a life-saving, age-reversing, fantastic mechanism that when we fast or when we starve, the body upregulates its cleanup process and its free radicals in this form that manages the cleanup. And if you take excess antioxidants at the same time, now you interfere with that mechanism. You shut down those free radicals that are gonna go around and clean up. So there's a problem that there's so much conflicting information about nutrition and nutritional supplements. I have a practice that's based on teaching people to eat whole foods and take a significant amount of good supplements because we know that works. But most of the research, very conflicting research, has been done on terrible supplements. It has been done on synthetic supplements which are at best ineffective, at worst they're antioxidants and they're synthetic and they unbalance the body. That's why the research is so conflicting because all the research is done on poor quality stuff. Here's what you want to do to get your vitamin C. First of all, you eat real food. Eat as much as you can. Try to get everything from real food. If you feel like you can't quite get there, then try a whole food product like acerola cherry powder, for example. Organic, whole concentrated acerola powder. In my office, we also use products like Cataplex C from Standard Process. That works great. Now, if you're one of those people who swear by vitamin C powders, ascorbic acid powders, uh, cold and flu remedies, and you swear that every time you feel a little tickle, you take it, it goes away, great, don't worry about it. But don't use those every day. Don't think that you have to have one of those vitamin C, ascorbic acid powders, and they sprinkle a little acerola on it, and it has a thousand or two thousand milligrams. That is not a nutrient. It's an antioxidant and it's not going to help you in the long run. Use it when you have a crisis. Use it when you feel like you need a little boost, but don't do it all the time. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you also check out that one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.